So, Alan, you, you spoke instead of uh, about cutting fossil fuels and so forth, about grazing and cattle. Yes. Um, the, the, I guess in a, in a nutshell, the idea being that through holistic management, the idea of, of carefully managed, intense grazing of cattle, you could emulate what happened with ancient herds and basically give um, grasslands the, 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 the churn and the nutrients that they need to, to, to grow and avoid desertification. Um, and uh, uh, a lot of people said, wow, that's the most hopeful thing I've heard in ages. What, what has happened since then? Well, things have exploded thanks to you. <laughs> By getting the word out to millions of people, uh, finally it's out in the public with common sense. We've, it, it makes sense to people. And we've made more progress in the last 50 years. So what had been expanding is just exploding now. Uh, now, some, some of the response to the talk, it's fair to say, was that uh, this just might be too good to be true. And there were some people who said, you know, we're not sure that there really uh, is scientific proof of this based on kind of controlled trials and so forth. Are, are, you, uh, are you sure that your idea really works? Absolutely, because it's 100% uh, based on so solid science and scientific principles. It's been working for 50 years on millions of acres on five continents. And all that is just from successful people spreading the word, ordinary people that are supporting families and so on. Uh, uh, that management needs to be holistic, embracing all science and other sources of knowledge. I don't think any scientist can argue. The difficulty has been for scientists trained in reductionist specialist fields to comprehend that. That's where the difficulty has lay. One, one thread of the criticism seems to be that it comes from people who don't like the idea of a world that eats a lot of meat. And uh, you know your your holistic management allows for intensive grazing of, of cattle. How, how do you how, how do you frame that? How do you respond to someone who says that that, that can't be a healthy way to go? Um, really, there are three issues that come up: uh, the amount of methane put out by livestock, whether or not carbon can be absorbed in the vast grassland soils of the world that are our grain-producing soils because they were former grasslands, and whether or not people eat meat. But time is not on our side. We have all the money in the world. We don't have time. Uh, climate change, desertification, biodiversity loss, these are so serious that people are not comprehending the magnitude of it yet, uh, generally. All right, now, every year that we delay on these issues, uh, we we'll lose billions of lives and trillions of dollars. And so even if you assume these issues are wrong and that 10 times the methane is put out, uh, nobody eats meat, we still have no option. If you want to address climate change, you have to address desertification, and only livestock properly handled can do it. No technology imaginable can. So, so give, give us a sense of scale. How many um, hectares or acres or whatever are, are coming under hol holistic management, it's say, in the last year, and, and what you project going out in the next uh, We've year. lost count. It's just got beyond controlling. Yeah. We are now uh, following a strategy of encouraging locally led, locally managed entrepreneurial hubs around the world. Uh, we have about 10 where people can, from universities, governments, environmental organizations, get together, manage holistically, and spread the knowledge that that is the way of the future, not reductionist management. And uh, the demand is so great, we're moving our conference to London this year. Holistic Management X. Great, great branding for you. So, so, in the, so, so your main focus right now is, is what for, for the year ahead? Well, it's to try and get the word out because there's no case in history where any organization or institution, which is a complex soft system, has ever been able to accept new scientific insights like this ahead of public opinion. So even if they want to change, our bureaucracies cannot until there's adequate level of public opinion change, then they can change, and then you're going to see the human spirit fly again. Mm. Well, I must admit, looking at your TED talk and the response to it, there's this amazing conversation raging. There's some people who, who are critical in some way, and then you've got this army of supporters who've actually tried your methods, and they're saying, no, 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 this really works. My land was transformed, and so forth. And it, it, it's actually, it's, it's, I think, one of the most successful 
conversation. It's almost like the, you know, the sort of tweaking and, and reshaping and testing of an idea, which I would love to see happen more on the site. So I, I really like what you catalyzed there. And uh, I very, very, very much hope that um, you, you gain success with it and that it really does lead to uh, carbon reduction. Thank you, thank you so much well, for thank you. all you're doing. Thank you. Uh, all Chris? Can I give you a present from the millions of people you'll never meet whose lives and cultures you're beginning to save? Does it bite? It doesn't bite. All it's right. from Africa. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> thank you, Chris. <laughs>